we'll move to the next presentation and uh, we will still talk about uh, the tools to measure um, energy consumption. And, uh, and Florian was talking about a bench, bench platform. And we will, I will introduce you as uh, so Maria from Orange. And Maria will talk about how to evaluate the energy consumption of your software. And as uh, Marmolab did during the first uh, challenge, Orange has another project and they build up a benchmark platform to test their energy consumption. So Maria, can you join me? I think you're here if you can. Yes. Hello, Maria. Yeah. Hello, Maria. So uh, I was just introducing your uh, your talk. So if you want to share some slide. Uh, yes, um, I will share. And you're the you first. Do you see my slide? Yes, it's OK. You're the first speaker with Christmas tree. So <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you. I have a little echo when I talk. Is, is the sound okay for you? It's okay. It's okay. okay. You can you can move on. I'm I'm putting mute and I, I... So let's get started. Uh, so thank you, API Days, for inviting uh, us to talk about our work on measuring the energy consumption. Uh, which we did, as Nicolas said, in during the Sustainable Digital Challenge earlier this year. Um, I should have been presenting this with Lionel Durand, uh, who worked um, with me on this subject, but unfortunately he cannot be here. But, well, good part of the credit for this work goes to him. Uh, let me introduce ourselves. So um, Lionel and I are developers at Orange Labs. Uh, we are close to the software craftsmanship movement, uh, which advocates creating value through well-crafted software. And we believe that today well-crafted software um, implies a sustainable software. Uh, we know that um, what we call in French obesiciel or fat software is a part of the problem in uh, IT sustainability. So we are involved in several initiatives within Orange um, around uh, IT sustainability. Uh, so we were working on a project uh, which builds basic, uh, which uh, builds a product called Fast for Voice as a Service, service which is basically an API uh, that allows uh, partners to easily create voice applications. For example, using our APIs, you can develop a vocal weather application and you do not need any telco skills for this. Um, about one year ago, uh, our project team started getting involved on the subject of sustainability and we wanted to, to improve our footprint. And as a first target, we were wondering about proposing a kind of energy label on our APIs for our customers. So this uh, allowed us to identify the kind of uh, sustainable feature we put in our product backlog. And we had some time to uh, consecrate, to devote to this um, work on energy footprint. Uh, by this time, we learned about the sustainable challenge and we decided to join. And we were looking for answers to some key questions uh, we were asking ourselves about how to put sustainability in practice. So as a first question, uh, we wanted to find a method to improve our energy footprint that would be suitable for software development because um, most of the work out there on uh, sustainability is aimed at hardware and material stuff and not on hard, uh, and not so much on software. Uh, we were also looking for something that uh, was well suited for an iterative approach, much as uh, Argos teams before said. 
because we were working on Agile and uh, we wanted to be able to prioritize sustainable stories in our backlog. And finally, uh, we were looking for something which would be um, quite lightweight and that we could easily learn, deploy and apply in our daily practices uh, while still working on the features uh, the business was asking us. So how can we start in this um, subject of sustainability? Um, during the challenge, we had the opportunity to learn about the impact by design approach from Faber Nobel, uh, which we found quite interesting. Um, as a side note, uh, Claudia del Prado will be presenting uh, on this subject just after the break, so I, I recommend you her talk. Uh, and the impact by design approach suggests that you start looking at a functional unit of your project uh, from end to end. So in our case, this functional unit uh, we decided to consider is a, a voice notification. So it's a use case where we have a medical center that requests the API to uh, generate a phone call to a patient and play a voice message uh, to remind of uh, an appointment. So we can see that in this uh, use case, uh, there are many software and hardware and network that are involved. We have the clinic platform, the vast platform, the internet, the telephone network, the patient's um, telephone. And so the impact is the, the addition of the impact of all these elements. Um, we decided to focus mainly on uh, energy consumption. Um, and uh, the energy consumption is the addition of the consumption in each of the parts. But uh, for some of these items, there is no easy work, way to measure, as it has been said by, by previous presenters. So we decided to focus mainly on the core VAS platform. Uh, and also because this is the, um, the part that is our, under our responsibility and in, on which we can take action. So as it has been said also before, um, measure is very important. So as uh, this is quote um, from L Lord Kelvin or other authors, <laughs> it's uh, controversial of where does it come from, but to measure is to know. And if you can measure, you can't measure it, you cannot improve it. Um, so we concentrated uh, on um, finding some way to measure because we, we need the measures to be able to determine where we should do improvements. And when we do some improvements, we need to assess whether the improvement is effective or not. Um, and uh, as we have seen, this is a complex uh, issue. Uh, and even when we focus on the core platform, there is no simple way to measure the consumption of the platform given that it is uh, hosted in a cloud environment, which implies virtualization, mutualization of servers. Uh, so it's difficult to know um, what the platform really consumes. Uh, so we focused our efforts in implementing a simple and reproducible method to measure the consumption of uh, the vast platform. Uh, so here is our first attempt to the test bench, you can see in the picture. Uh, so on the right, we have a laptop on which we run the platform. Uh, in the middle, we have a power meter that measures power consumption. And on the left, we have another laptop that graphs uh, the measures from the power meter and displays the results. Uh, in the laptop on the right, uh, we run our platform within Docker containers. Uh, and we run a stress test to inject some load on the platform. Uh, the tests also run in the same laptop and they send a request to the API to generate voice calls at variable rates. So we take measures of power consumption during the, the test loads run. And here's what the measures say. So on the graph, uh, you can see uh, that the evolution of the power demand depends on the voice uh, and the rate of voice calls per second. So for, from a rate of one call per second in the left to a rate of call, six calls per second in the right, 
uh, when we analyze this graph, we can already draw some conclusions. Uh, first, there is a minimal consumption of the machine, uh, which uh, is of the system in the idle states, which is of around bad watts a minute. Uh, secondly, the consumption increases with the intensity of the test to reach 20 watts more, or uh, 28 watts in total, uh, 48, sorry, 48 watts in total. Um, and beyond rate of six, six calls per second, we have a limit uh, when the consumption remains stable. And finally, if we um, push some more load on the platform after eight calls a second, we start to see uh, more and more logs, more errors in the logs, which means that we have uh, reached the limits of the platform. Uh, next, we did a second attempt of um, a second version of the test bench in which we used a software uh, power meter instead of a physical power meter. And I will show you a little demo of the test bench. So if the video doesn't play right, please just tell me. So here on the laptop, we are running uh, using Docker containers, the power meter and the VAST platform. And we launch some load tests that uh, generate requests to the API to, um, to make phone calls. So these are normal unit tests written in Java and using a framework called REST Assured to request the API. And while the test run, it's a short run, uh, we look uh, at the components. So we have the VAST platform with the functional components, some technical components and some mock components. Uh, necessary to run the tests. And we have the power meter. The power meter is composed of a sensor which uh, collects raw measures from the Linux kernel and stores them in a database. And there is also the formula which uh, uses the data, the raw data produced by the sensor to calculate power consumption and stores it in a second database, which we can then request uh, with a Grafana to make some reports on power consumption. And now we refresh the dashboard to see the consumption during the test and we can see the load that increases. Uh, so here we have some holes because of the video recording of the demo, but we can also see that we have the consumption of each of the different components in different colors, so which is um, the interest is interesting part of the, um, the test bench uh, using Power API. So we use this test bench uh, to run uh, the same series of tests we have done with the physical power meter. And what we could observe is that the results are equivalent in their profile and in the order of magnitude to the one of the physical power meter. So this makes us confident on uh, the, um, the reliability of the measures of the software uh, power meter. And uh, besides the um, power API, uh, which I didn't say, I'm sorry. A Power API is a technology that is um, comes from research at INRIA and it's an uh, open source technology that anyone can use. Um, Power API evaluates the power usage of each component. Uh, this allows us to identify the opportunities for optimizing um, the energy consumption. And we can see here that 80% uh, of the power uh, is uh, used by the two telephony servers, which are depicted in green in the diagram. So if we plan to do some uh, improvement on energy efficiency, we should start in the green part. We can go a bit further in the analysis of, uh, the, of the results. So this graph shows the evolution of the power cost of one voice calls when we increase the loss of the server. This is the green curve here. And we can see that the nominal cost decreases uh, when we make a better use of the server resources because we put some more load on it and it decreases to a certain point and then errors start to appear and then the cost of, uh, of uh, calls that go okay uh, raises again. In the case of our experiment, um, the optimal use is associated to about five joules by call, which means uh, nothing by itself because it can be totally different uh, depending on the platform and can be 
different from test platform to production platform. But still, the analysis uh, of these uh, values is interesting. Uh, it, uh, it is useful to identify some improvement actions. So first, we should look for the optimal use of our platform by sizing the infrastructure according to the observed load. And secondly, we should investigate how to bring down the green line, which means optimizing uh, the processing, uh, in our case, on the telephony servers, which are those that consume the, the most. And third, we should push the red line to the right in order to delay uh, the, um, the moment where the errors appear. And this means working on the bottlenecks of our software. We identified all some other actions uh, to go further, we, which we could not uh, yet implement. But um, I'll tell you the ideas. The first one is to set up a power measure bench in our continuous integration improvement. And this way, we should be able to make continuous measures and take decisions accordingly uh, in the day-to-day -day life of the project. Uh, so, but it's not that easy to integrate the measures in the CI, uh, in the CI process. Uh, and that's what our friends at Argos are, are trying to do as they presented just before. Uh, the second idea would be to evaluate the whole perimeter of our use case because so far we have only concentrated on the vast platform and we need to see the consumption on the internet and on the, the other parts of the end-to-end -end, uh, use case. And also we would like to have measures on the real platform, but so far it's not feasible as uh, Nicolas was telling us um, on the tools that are available or not available yet. So a few ideas um, to conclude. Um, so measuring is essential to improve the energy efficiency. I think uh, um, many presenters agree on this. And in order to be able to take appropriate decisions, uh, it's fundamental for a project team to be able to measure its consumption uh, in an autonomous way and throughout the entire life cycle. But uh, measuring the energy consumption of distributed systems that run in virtual environments is complex and currently there is not magical support for this. So there is a challenge for data centers and cloud providers to offer these kind of measures to the services they host. Um, but nevertheless, uh, there are already some tools out there that we can use uh, to start building um, a strategy to improve energy efficiency of our software. And we found that uh, Power API provides uh, a way to measure that is both practical and reliable. So it seems uh, a good tool to start. Um, so thank you. Uh, and if you want to get started in um, sustainability in your project, I strongly suggest that you join the Digital Sustainable Challenge, which is a really great opportunity to learn, to practice, and to have fun. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. Thank you for this great uh, advertising again. Um, so I have a question for you. Uh, we have a few minutes. Um, my question was, how did you use this benchmark platform in Orange after the challenge? And did, did you share your project internally? Did you share it with customer? Um, uh, did you product? We we shared a lot on the on on our work. Uh, it really attracted a lot of attention. Uh, people are very interested on this subject, so we have done many presentations on, on, on the subject. Um, concerning the project itself, it um, it has some different challenges so far. So we've not been using the platform itself, but uh, one of the main um, learnings we got was uh, the idea that we should really monitor the capacity of the platform so that the errors do not appear too early. So we, we do not need 
to add more servers or to increase the capacity of our servers. So the measure mm -hmm. of um, how many uh, calls in parallel we can handle and uh, when do the errors start to appear is something that is uh, monitored um, on each release of the of the product. Okay, so before I move to the next question, can you please uh, unshare your screen so we will have a chance to see you? Uh... I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, okay. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, yes, another question regarding the the origin of your initiative. Uh, can you explain us who, let's say, who was the sponsor of your initiative? Is it you? Is it uh, any? I don't know. Uh, CTO, CIO. Uh, uh, um, it's a, um, It was kind of a bottom up initiative we we in the project really um we started getting uh, aware a lot of aware about um the problem of the impact of it okay. uh in the last year uh we we were really uh, willing to do something uh about it so it was an initiative from the project then we talked to our product owner and we had this idea of let's try to do a, a, an energy label, which is really ambitious the time being, but this was a driver. And then we had also sponsors that suggested us to join the Sustainable Digital Challenge. So it's it's been a bottom-up initiative that has that had support from uh, from higher level. Okay, okay. And uh, the last question: Did you make a, a carbon summary of your Christmas tree? <laughs> not not really <laughs> i replaced my um my lamp in the living room with the lights of the christmas tree <laughs> thank you maria for this honest answer <laughs> okay thank you for thank your you. time maria